Hi, this is Councillor Nathan Zampronio here, and I'm giving you the post-council meeting report for our meeting of the 13th of September. It's actually 1am at the moment, and the meeting has only just finished. But I wanted to let you know about a couple of important things that we were able to pass at the meeting this evening. The first one is encouraging. Councillor Jurek brought a notice of motion to uh, affirm that Council will restore the gas lamps in Windsor Mall, something that's often been in the local media. And I'm really pleased to say that that passed with a majority. So we have committed to ensure that those gas lanterns uh, remain as gas lanterns. Uh, and that was previously in doubt. The other really important thing that we were able to cover tonight relates to the revised voluntary planning agreement, the VPA, uh, concerning the Gross River Bridge. You may know of this because of its presence in the media, because the road alignment that was going to go through would have gone through the Wilcox House, and it was seen on A Current Affair and in other local organs. The motion that was before Council was to effectively endorse the VPA and therefore condemn the Wilcox home to destruction. I moved an amendment which sought to readdress the road alignment question, and I'm very pleased that it passed by a majority of seven votes to five. The names appearing on your screen now are the names of the councillors who voted to condemn the Wilcox home to destruction. And these are the councillors who voted against that. I'm thankful to my colleagues who were um, receptive to the persuasiveness of my argument. What follows are the remarks that I gave to council a few hours ago when this item came up. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to start by saying that I want to see the Gross River Bridge built. I agree with Councillor Connolly that the delays that we've experienced are, are unconscionable, but we have a real obligation to get this right, and it falls to us. I endorse the thrust of the new VPA that seeks to formalise the new location, which offers better flood protection and the overall route required to deliver that outcome. But it has become clear during the public consultation process that many, many people have concerns. And if there's something that we can fix and we don't bother, then I'd like to ask why we even bothered to ask the public for their feedback in the first place. As Councillor Connolly suggests, it is not a fait accompli. It is an entirely appropriate juncture to address shortcomings in a VPA after a process of public consultation and when it comes back to the chamber. Otherwise, why did we bother? I know that this revised VPA has been vastly too long in the offering. My own public comment on this issue, I've spared neither Council nor the developer for so many delays that it mocks the fact that under the original VPA, the bridge should have been completed and opened by now as a function of the number of lots sold at Red Bank. But if we get something wrong, as I believe that we do with this proposed VPA, I want to defend this as absolutely the appropriate juncture to fix it. What it gets wrong is that we as councillors asked for some analysis to fix the problem of the proposed alignment going straight through a particular family's home. Now, apart from our ethical duty to do the right thing by the community, this is, in my opinion, something that will make the compensation required to be paid by taxpayers to be higher. It's not merely an ethical decision, it's a pragmatic um, uh, no-brainer in terms of what the best outcome is for the community and for council. Far better to slightly alter the route and use vacant, flat land nearby at likely lower cost. But now it turns out that we were not presented with that option. The options report that we were presented with has had two kinds of solution, neither of which we were told were viable. One swept wide of the entire Wilcox property and delivered poorer flood immunity and a more expensive bridge. I am not suggesting that we go that way. The other option, the so-called minimalist option that just misses the house, but is otherwise close to what we are being invited to adopt here tonight, was hobbled in its ability to deliver a standards compliant road because, inexplicably, the edge vacant land to the east of the Wilcox's house was off the table. I am not suggesting a conspiracy. Most governmental ineptitude is the result of stuff-ups rather than grand plots. But we in this chamber simply cannot be satisfied that the options to find an alignment that meets the design criteria and avoids the Wilcox House have been put before us. And that's what this, emotion, this amendment seeks to fix. 
I received confirmation today that Transport for New South Wales will acquire whatever land they need to as a result of the process that we're engaged in. Their agnosticism is quite welcome and it means that we don't need to worry about that part. I don't believe that the developers will walk away if we take the time to get this right. It is true that they have asked for repeated delay after delay after delay relating to extending various milestones on no fewer than four occasions over the years and in fact request to do so again tonight. They will bear this brief additional delay just fine. I do not believe, as Councillor Connolly says, that it will delay this process interminably or for years and years. Just long enough to draw up another alignment that is compliant with the appropriate standards, confers the appropriate flood immunity and which contemplates all available land for acquisition. I also believe that we will be litigated into oblivion if we pass a flawed VPA tonight because this claim that certain land was taken off the table in a private document uh, smells bad to me. I recognise that this VPA is about more than just the fate of one house. All the parties deserve the certainty of their obligations by having a new VPA approved. But it is absolutely clear that the community has delivered us an overwhelming mandate to readdress this issue and do not, uh, they, they support us if we choose, as this amendment seeks to do, to readdress the issue of the route in a way that makes us confident that we've actually had all of the appropriate options placed before us and at the moment we do not. Thank you. Uh, yes, and thank you. And I'll, I'll try and keep this brief. But, and I'm glad that the amendment has become the motion. Um, but I, I just want to address briefly just a couple of things that, that have been said in the debate. Firstly, there's some apprehension that, you know, if we were to lodge a new Part 5 application is that it would take as long to process as the, the previous one. But it bears remembering that the VPA, which is over a centimetre thick and probably comes with a, long, a lot of associated documentation, will be 97% the same as the document that we've already submitted. All we're proposing to do is to alter one portion of the alignment, and I don't know that that amounts to quite the drastic change that some people are making it out to be. It sounds a little overblown. As far as my contention that, you know, uh, the assertion that I'm, I'm forcing a 1986 Maunsell design uh, on the parties. Uh, I suppose it would have been more accurate to say in my amendment that it's elements of the Maunsell design. I'm not suggesting the Maunsell design in its entirety, but merely elements of, and the elements particularly that pertain to the alignment that was deemed perfectly okay in the vicinity of One Ashton's Road. Um, I'd also like to refute the suggestion that, you know, if, if we go to the developers with any suggestion of further delays that they're just going to pick up their bundle and, and walk away. This is something that's asserted constantly and yet when every time they come to us and have us over a barrel and demand some kind of a delay and we supinely agree to it, that's okay. But when we go to them with a very well-founded concern about a flaw in the VPA and we ask for uh, a matter to be readdressed, suddenly that's something that we can't do? Well, I don't accept that that's correct either. And furthermore, uh, to the degree that that relates to any kind of delay, uh, I'd invite councillors to contemplate what kind of delay, what kind of spanner in the works would be put if this were to be litigated and was tied up in the Land and Environment Court for a couple of years. I think we've got an opportunity to speed the plough by getting this right and then bringing something back that everybody's happy with. As far as our obligations in this chamber, um, you know, I don't accept the, the contention that we are uh, acting improperly by mentioning one property by name or another property by name. I did seek ethical guidance from the general manager about whether it was appropriate to speak in those terms, and I was told generally that it was perfectly OK to do that. Um, uh, whereas the, the favourable treatment that a particular property owner appears to have received occurred as a result of a secret meeting that had to be exposed through a GIPPA application. So, Ethically, I think we're on very strong grounds in, in resolving the way that I hope we will tonight. Um, uh, I find it 
the, the mayor says that it's, it's, it's a very, very difficult decision. And I agree, but I, I don't know. I find it easy to do the right thing when it's as clear as this. And I cannot understand how anybody who had taken the time to go out to see the lay of the land, to eyeball um, the property and the alignment uh, that's being proposed and the vacant land that's to one side, and furthermore, have sat across the kitchen table from this family, could vote to effectively condemn their house without going it through our, our due diligence. So I'd like to thank the Chamber for their support so far and hope we can get this home.